everybody welcome and we are going to have the last session before lunch by Thomas Covron it, and it's going to be is your OSM app spying on you so we are here to find out thank you yeah hello everyone um, before I start doing my talk about privacy and all those ugly things um, I want to do a few disclaimers um, first of all, I'm not a professional security researcher, I just know some tooling and I'm generally curious. And I don't even care myself that much, but I like it when products are made that way that are privacy preserving. And I'm also not saying that all the things I will show here are bad or you shouldn't do it, but just think about what you're doing when you're developing an app with OpenStreetMap. And the thing is, when we go along and we say, oh, we're from OpenStreetMap, um, um, there's like always like a sentiment that, oh, it's something positive, and uh, people are using OpenStreetMap because they have a, um, uh, like maybe this, this thing, uh, yeah, I love using it because I don't want to give my data away to Google, Apple, or I don't trust them, or um, yeah, it's great to, to support a free project, something like that. And they generally have some expectations that we have a brand identity and we have this thing. And when people use OpenStreetMap based apps, they think, okay, those are um, especially privacy preserving or they're uh, good because they're developed by a community or something like that. People have positive associations and positive attitude. But the thing is, we as OpenStreetMap, we do not control the whole stack. Yeah? So if you have some application out there, yes, we give the data as a project, but what you do with the data, that is up to the developer of the application. And using OpenStreetMap, yeah, what, what does this even mean? Does it mean that you use the data, or does it mean that you use the OpenStreetMap project, or something that is hosted by OpenStreetMap? And even if you just use OpenStreetMap.org, which is like the plain vanilla case that um, we control as the OpenStreetMap community, this also leaves a trail of data. Yeah? If you look at it, if you generally use OpenStreetMap.org, you will use a variety of different services. Yeah? You will use the search, you will use maybe the routing, um, uh, you will use um, the tile service, and so on and so on. And they, those are controlled by very different entities. So for example, the website itself, the Nominatim, and the analytics tool, um, it's called, now called Memoto, but the domain is still PWIC. Those are hosted by OSMF. Um, the routing, for example, is hosted by Foskis, which is the German local chapter of OpenStreetMap. But if you use, for example, the not or SRM routing, your routing requests will go to graphhopper.com, which is a for-profit company with an involvement in OSM. Um, and if you look, for example, at the user accounts on the OSM website, you will use um, a service called Gravatar, which is a US-based company with no involvement in OSM at all. And um, if you click, for example, on the Locate Me button, uh, this will transfer some data to go through your operating system, and you will use um, the, the operating system functions to locate yourself. This will also leave a trail of data. And you might say, yeah, okay, I'm leaving a trail of data, but it's not that bad. We now have GDPR, and there are now privacy policies, and they're fantastic. We can look at what, what actually happens. And um, let's do what basically no one, maybe except Simon, does. Uh, let's have a look at privacy policies. And um, the reality is they're all very different, and they're very varying degrees of private. Um, I'm not going to tell which one is from which service, but they're basically all related to um, using osm.org. Um, one is IP addresses are stored, uh, sorry, IP addresses stored are shortened to two bytes and detailed usage information is retained for 180 days. Okay. Every API request is stored. We save the associated information, request body, and headers IP and time for a maximum of five weeks. Okay. And from another 
We collect information that web browsers, mobile devices, and servers typically make available, such as browser type, IP address, unique div div device identifiers, language preference, referring site, the date and time of access, operating system, and mobile network information. Okay, still feeling private. Um, there is even one, one bonus, also not saying from, from what that is. Please do not submit personal data or other confidential material to any of our services. Right, but... <laughs> and um, normally European privacy regulation requires you to uh, tell um, in your privacy statement why certain data is saved and processed. Not even how, but why. And some third parties don't really do it and others are a bit vague and saying, yeah, to identify misusage and improve performance and usability. This is like German and general to, uh, terminology here. Um, yes, some of those privacy policies or the, the makers of those privacy policies make an effort to um, detail what third party providers they use themselves because generally when you operate a service, you might have um, some service that you use for billing or for, I don't know, log aggregation or for hosting your database or whatever. But it doesn't always work. Sometimes if you click on a link, it's just page not found. Yeah, so this really happens. Okay, so now we went through, okay, so you leave a trail of data and yeah, you maybe leave some data with third party providers, but maybe let's just first do a, a risk assessment. Yeah, is, is there any risk in, in using those tools? And the truth is, yeah, it's your location data and it's not only your current location, but you also leave a trail of your usual locations that you spend some time. And if you look at log data, of course, this just looks like noise that it basically you would say, oh, what's, what's the bad thing in this? I don't see a pattern, but well, machines do see a pattern. And if you label it and visualize it, suddenly patterns will emerge and there could be reconstructed a trail of your activity. And you might say, yeah, but who makes such an effort, yeah? And sure, people that are operating the core OSM infrastructure are not interested in, in doing that because they have much better things to do, keeping the platform running and uh, stable and yeah, they don't have an incentive to, to collect the data and we'll throw it away and yeah, maybe if someone is misusing the data, they will see, okay, oh, it's from that IP address block and will hunt you down or just basically block. Um, but they won't do probably anything with the data. But there are companies focusing on selling ads and so selling location-based ads. And if you look at that, I mean, the positive thing about that slide is they got the attribution kind of correct halfway through. Um, but basically you can, you can do ads and uh, it's not only for people who are currently in a location, but um, you can sell people to, uh, you can sell ads to people who are sometimes at that location, who live there, who are currently traveling. So basically this service that is here selling ad services knows, okay, you're not native in this location, you're just temporarily here, you're traveling there. Yeah. And um, this is one aspect. But you, people say, okay, I use an OSM app, a third party app that even works offline. So I'm good, right? Because then nothing could happen. I'm downloading the, the data in front. It's not like Google Maps where I have to be online to, uh, to zoom in the map and so on. So everything should be fine, right? Okay, so let's fire up one uh, very popular um, OSM based app. Yeah, and let's, let's do some browsing, yeah? Let's look uh, around, maybe there's, oh, there's an Italian restaurant nearby, there's maybe the train station, or I want to go to the mosque, yeah? And you see a little ad in the bottom, yeah, everything is fine, right? And now let's, let's look behind the curtains and look, okay, what is the app actually doing? And I fired up a, a tool that intercepts the traffic, and it's, Basically, yeah, there is some communication going on, obviously. Yeah, you see some requests to Mopub, you see some requests to Crashlytics, to Facebook, appsfly.com. Okay, something is apparently going on, even though I downloaded all the map data before actually starting the app. So let's, let's dive a little bit deeper and uh, look what is transmitted. All of this is at the time of writing, of course, apps change 
like with time, but yeah, that was when I last checked. Yeah, this is um, the thing what uh, maps of me is sending to Facebook. And yeah, it looks like tons of data and there's a few interesting bits. For example, they're sending um, the model of my phone. Okay, fair enough. Um, also the width of my screen for whatever reason. Facebook apparently needs to know how wide my screen is. And Facebook also knows how loud the volume of my phone is. With like 0.21774244 whatever percent. Um, there's also other data sent out, for example, to, I think this is to Mopub, this is, um, uh, they will send like some, some stuff out. Um, yeah, apparently I'm on, on the mobile network Vodafone in the country 262, which stands for Germany, and 02 is, uh, or 02 is the German mobile phone operator Vodafone again, yeah, so they will send this out as well. But it goes even deeper, if you tap on certain things, so uh, yeah, you tap on some uh, hotel there, it will also emit some requests out. Yeah, again, I've pre-downloaded all the data in offline mode and so on, but still, this will, um, during runtime of the app, send out requests. Yeah, and in that case to booking.com, yeah, there is a payload of data, and for example, there is um, the ho hotel ID that I tapped on, apparently this is already linked in the Maps Me app. So booking.com will now also know where I am. Here is some, some more requests going out. Maybe that's not that critical because it, um, um, it doesn't show like the exact location I'm currently in, but it will send out uh, in which region I am. So you see, okay, apparently they're asking from their ad network to get um, local ads in Cologne where I was at the time of writing. And you might say, yeah, okay, sure, but um, there's the settings menu and you can configure things. But all the things I've shown you with all the requests going out, all the data that is going out, this was with the toggle send statistics set to off. So actually I told the app to not do it and it just ignored it. You can also tap the show office button off, which is basically office is like a nicer word for advertisement and um, then you get like this sweet dog that will tell you, okay, if you want some more privacy, please pay us some money. Yeah, and yeah, I said, okay, let's try it out. I will just turn off that feature, pay them 99 cents for the week, and it did look a bit better afterwards, but not much better, yeah? It will still connect to Crashlytics, Crashlytics is a popular uh, service by Google which tracks apps, app crashes. So basically when your app crashes, this will tell the developers, oh, okay, it, it crashed because of this and that, and maybe those variables were set and this current view was active, and so on. Okay, fair enough, but my app didn't crash. It was running fine, but nonetheless it was connecting, connecting to Crashlytics. Um, for the Crashlytics data, we can't really inspect them because they use um, uh, HTTPS pinning, so I can't really look into it. It's, yeah, we would probably to, to look into the SDKs, what's actually happening there. But we can look at the other stuff. We can uh, look at what uh, is sent to mopub.com even without offers. So I already paid maps.me to not show me those offers. I disabled the statistics. Nonetheless, they will send out data to an app network. Yeah, and for example, and that's kind of fun. They tell the uh, Mopub to track that I don't want to be tracked. Yeah, because DNT stands for do not track. Yeah, I mean, yeah, crazy. Um, to AppSpire, they're sending some stuff, but um, they use some, I don't know, fun encoding, encryption, I don't know what, hap what is happening there. Um, and as bonus, um, this is this is the except from um, the privacy policy of Maps.me uh, or of Maps.me owner to be exact. It's my.com, and they say the legal basis for collecting my location data is consent. Okay, if they mean to, but I didn't really consent at any point. And 
just one thing, maybe someone from Maps.me is listening. It is nice that you're giving people the option to opt out of all the statistics and things, but it would be nice if it actually worked. Yeah, you're messing here with the reputation of OSM. You are using OSM things. We are recommending your app to friends and family, and we didn't know that because you didn't tell us. And maybe we can look at some more positive examples. Maybe there are apps who are doing better. So let's look at OSM and on iOS. And the good news is it is generally less chatty. So um, as long as you uh, disable online tiles, it will, will not communicate to the outside world. Well, unless you tap on some place, it will actually call home. Yeah, it doesn't call to some third party providers like Facebook or whatever, but it will go to its own domain and um, retrieve some data. To me, it looks like um, this is done in good intent because uh, OSM and has the option to show mapillary pictures in the app, but um, they don't want to expose you to mapillary, so you don't do like the direct re request to mapillary. Mapillary could track you, but instead they are basically proxying the things. But um, I think there is some, some mis uh, misconfiguration in the app because mapillary was actually disabled at the time of checking. So probably there is some bug that they're fetching the data without even needing it. And by the way, OSM and you shouldn't update your Nginx, it's really old. Um, there's one positive example, one app that I used uh, that's also OSM based, that's um, Guru Maps. Um, yeah, we can browse around for a little bit uh, through the app. There is privacy settings in there. You can, um, they have three different settings for app analytics, for crash data and for navigation stats. So you can basically say, okay, I want to help you um, having a, a better navigation system and find uh, problems in the routing, um, but I don't want to send crash data or an analytics data. Uh, and the positive thing is uh, it does actually work because it, uh, with the whole browsing, it didn't send out any requests at all, not, not a single signal. Okay, so what do we learn? Unfortunately, not every app that is OSM based is a private app. And unfortunately, not even open source software is guaranteed to be private because Maps.me is open source. And developers, please respect the need for privacy. Don't collect everything up front. Okay, if you have a crash, okay, that might be a legitimate reason to collect the data at that moment, but don't connect every time to a third party service. Don't send things out about us. And ask users for consent because you can ask a user, say, okay, do you want to participate in this improvement system and talk about uh, what you're actually doing. I know all the UX people, you hate it when you have an onboarding process in the app, but it's really important. As you've seen, you can uh, browse for really private things that you don't want to talk uh, about or you don't want it to expose to some third party services. Yeah, that's important as a user that you can have a choice. And as a developer, please use the system as, systems APIs for uh, privacy settings. So for example, in iOS, you have the uh, AS identifier manager and you can check for the is advertising tracking, tracking enabled setting. Yeah? So there you can see, okay, you can, you can get consent without having a screen. So if, if a user has advertising tracking enabled, then you don't have to ask, but if it's disabled, please respect it. And don't include third-party frameworks blindly because that's the thing that we often see. Uh, a lot of developers are including, uh, for example, Facebook SDK and Facebook SDK is always doing some requests and is always uh, having some, uh, some stuff going on. Please really think about it. Even including may compromise the privacy of the user. Okay, that's all from me and I'm really looking forward to questions. Thanks, Thomas, with an interesting and informative talk. And now we'll have five minutes for questions. Comments? Okay. Um, did you look at uh, the Android versions as well? 
But sorry, please speak up. Did you look at the Android versions as well? Uh, I haven't looked at the Android versions. I don't have an Android phone, so sorry, I, uh, I couldn't check. Um, I assume that with MapsMe it should be very similar because it's widely the same code base with OSM and it's different because um, I don't think they do share uh, code bases so your mileage may vary. I recently uh, discovered that there is an app on F-Droid called Maps and apparently it's some kind of fork of MapsMe and I was wondering if yeah. that fork would do all this tracking. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that um, even source code analysis is uh, not really 100% safe because you don't actually know what you got shipped on your phone. Yeah, with with uh, Google Play and so on, you don't have that much of control to check what is delivered. So, I mean, sure, maybe the apps have some mechanism to see, okay, they're currently behind a proxy, so probably someone is analyzing it. But runtime analysis is safer because you see, okay, what is actually happening, what data is actually being sent out. Okay, so sure, with things like Crashlytics where I couldn't look into the data, I don't know what's actually happening. I mean, that's the thing we don't know. Maybe they're even transferring the location data. We can't tell it because, yeah, it's, it's really difficult to tell what software you're running in the end. It's, there is always some kind of trust involved in that whole process. Okay, it looks be. like everybody's satisfied, but I guess you have a green pin, so whoever has questions, comments. Oh, uh, just one more question, Simon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if nobody else wants to ask questions, then I'll jump into the breach. Um, just one remark that privacy notice from MapsMe is actually nonsense. You can't, for the same thing, have consent and legitimate interest as, as the reason for doing things, so it, it does, it's not meaningful what, they, what they're actually writing there. The other thing is um, stepping back from, from actual apps on, on mobile devices. Um, there are a couple of ways where we're leaking privacy related information um, without people really being aware of it, so assume you start up ID and you're looking at an imagery layer from Bing, you are actually transferring the, the area that you're looking at because they know which tiles you are looking right. at to them and uh, that's one of the things which we don't really point out to people at this point in time. Um, so it's less, you know, nobody's really interested in, the, in, in, in OpenStreetMap when you're looking at OpenStreetMap tiles, but actually we're going out to third parties with all the other layers. Yeah. And that's a issue on mobile devices as well, naturally. Yeah. There's one more. If we have a moment, uh, uh, in a more general level, um, I feel that the privacy of the editors is pretty poorly protected in OSM. Uh, my own history is kind of revealing if I look. I know where I, I've been in every vacation and everybody will know it. Is there any plan to tackle this big problem? I think uh, Roland has a had or has a ses session about uh, Mapper's privacy because, I mean, okay, with Mapper's privacy, sure, you probably you leave a trail of data as well, but at least you can choose because you decide on that. But I think maybe Simon can say mm. one word or two. Yeah, because... Um, doesn't really have something directly to do with your talk, but uh, uh, last year we redid our privacy policy for the OSMF and we had a long list of stuff that we need to change to be GDPR compatible. And some of that has been done. For example, people that sign up now actually have to agree to terms of use which have privacy uh, respect clauses in them, so you're not allowed to stalk people, not allowed to extract the data for purposes that will uh, violate somebody's privacy. And there are planned changes to the API so that people that are not logged in, don't have an OpenStreetMap account, will not be able to access stuff like the username 
and, and similar of, of changes. So you will actually have to be logged in, have an OpenStreetMap account um, so that you can access this data. And similar changes will be coming with the planet dumps, so with the raw data, so that there will be as some of this is being implemented. For example, Geofabric already does this. You, you can get extracts which include the usernames and extracts which don't include them. The, this is a bit work in progress. The, the main hurdle right now is that we've not found a developer, a paid developer, I should point out, to implement these changes on the API. But there, there's work, in, and if you want to, I can point you to the documents and all the stuff that's going on. No, because the, the problem with those are, are that um, we do actually want to know who edited for reasons of vandalism protection and copyright uh, issues. So we'll, we, we'll try not to spy on people, but we do want to have a direct link between the edits and a certain person so that we can go back to them, ask them from where did you, where, where did you get this data from. Um, but the information that we collect is limited. But you are completely correct, you know, there's lots of stuff that you can read out of the edit history of somebody. Um, and there's, there's a longish paper, which is mainly from me, which, can, which goes into great detail, probably including some stuff that you didn't even know. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. Okay. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, everybody, for attending and enjoy your lunch. If you have further questions, you can talk to them after. Okay, thank you very much.